I believe that a person cannot be defined by their job only, and I'm convinced that any fair and honest job is good. I come from a poverty background and I could never stop working to have a break because I had to provide for myself. And now that I'm 40, I've had over 13 jobs, office, freelance, self-employed. I've worked for small local companies and big international corporations, as well as some interesting individuals, from business coaches to food bloggers. And I also had my own tiny business endeavors. And in today's video, I will share with you my experience and insights from a standpoint of an introvert. Because being introverted heavily impacts our professional life and choices. And in the end of the video, I will tell you which of the jobs I would love to continue having and why. And I will also show you some photos from my business, my own business project, so I hope this video will be interesting and useful for you, or helpful maybe. If you're new here, welcome! I'm Anna, and this channel is about minimalism, intentional and simple living, and also personal adventures of a heavy-duty introvert. And if you're back, I'm so glad to have your company again. I won't mention any side tiny hustles that I had during my studies, so I worked as a renovation worker and also English language tutor. And we'll begin with the first adult job in chronological order. Just right after I graduated from the university with a degree in English literature, translation and teaching, one of my school friends said that a new company uh, that exported coal was looking for a translator. So I decided to apply and I was accepted. But then it turned out that apart from my translation thing, I had to be a personal assistant to the CEO of the company. And for me, as an introvert, and at that time a very shy, a timid young woman, it was a nightmare, honestly. I lasted for only about 10 months and then I left. It all happened in the early 2000s, and I won't go much into the detail, and I will just say that it was harsh working with men in the coal mining industry. I think that experience made me realize for sure that I could never be a personal assistant due to me being so introverted, and I also took a decision never work with a company who had anything to deal with uh, coal or oil mining, because, I don't know, it, it was back then, and it's just my personal experience, but I, I just decided I would never do that, because the situations that I had to deal with heavily collided with my moral values, and I don't want that to repeat ever again. I taught English both in public schools and in private language learning centers, and I can say for sure that it was one of the most eye-opening professional experiences in my life, because I had to learn so much about different people, <laughs> humans, and their peculiarities. I had to deal with different age groups from 4 years old to 60 years old and above. I cannot say that I didn't enjoy teaching, I did, but I didn't much like the bureaucracy and the stiffness of the teaching and learning system, at least in those places where I worked. And I think that uh, teaching language specifically is not just for me, because I found it very boring. And when you teach someone English, and English is obviously not my native not language, not my mother tongue, and I want to speak freely, 
and uh, as fluently as I can. I want to not to restrict myself, I want to make mistakes and apparently if you are an English teacher you are not allowed to make any mistakes. So I didn't enjoy that kind of restrictive part of my profession. And surprisingly, being an introvert, I tolerated teaching much better than some of my other <laughs> jobs because I didn't have to open up that much. First, I created all the conditions for my students to open up and thus I felt safer to express myself further on. So it was like, a, I don't know, it was like very rewarding emotionally, as I already said, and for introverts, it's very important. I worked for an international marketing company for more than seven years. I was an analyst a translator. And although my uh, job title sounded pretty impressive, my responsibilities were very simple and rather enjoyable. I worked at my computer. I didn't have any dress code. I had a fantastic boss and amazing co-workers. And I could actually plan my own working time. It was a dream of a job. What I had to do is to collect all news and media mentions with specific brands, companies and corporations, then to translate, rework, analyze those pieces of information into some reports and analytical papers. That's all I had to do. Working there, I got interested in making analog collages as I had access to a huge corporate archives with all sorts of newspapers and magazines. But I eventually left that job because I decided to go back to my Siberian home city and be closer to my parents to take care of them. And also, honestly, I felt kind of stuck. Yes, it was a very comfortable job with great conditions, with health insurance, it was fairly well paid, but I got tired of a seven-year-long stagnation. The last office job that I had was pretty controversial as I had to change my professional field and I've become a copywriter and eventually a marketing specialist. I loved working with techs even before that and I had some small side hustles, side jobs, but then my marketing writing skills had to become more serious. Eventually, I became responsible for training sales managers of the company that I worked for and also for organizing various events, including public events and some uh, celebrations so city-wide. And on the one hand, it was interesting due to the newness of what I was doing, but on the other, it was very exhausting and draining for me as an introvert. After a couple of years and a huge conflict with my boss, I left and I think it was one of the best decisions in my life because I finally made up my mind to go freelance. And before we move on to my freelance experience, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with topics ranging from illustration, graphic design and photography to music, marketing and productivity. It's the place where I go to get inspired, learn new skills and put them to work in impactful ways. A lot of people who I know in my life personally told me how afraid they are to start something new because first, they don't, just don't know where to begin and second, they don't get that much needed support. And this is where Skillshare can be a wonderful companion as it has everything you need to go from passion to paycheck or seed your side hustle 
On the platform, you will find classes that are led by industry pros who have walked the walk and an active community of members ready to cheer you on. I highly recommend exploring the learning path, your creative business, build it, brand it, launch it, which will take you through concepting your business to branding and building an audience. You will save so much time and mental effort by having all major information and skills to master in just one place. If you're interested to see where your creative passion can lead to, you can start learning new skills right now. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. It's safe and easy. If you don't like it, you can cancel within the trial month without being charged anything. Thank you for watching the sponsored segment and considering signing up for the free trial because this helps my channel a lot. I can say that I've made 100% of use of my university degree. While so many people don't have a chance to use their education properly in their jobs, and uh, sometimes, most times, uh, it happens due to some peculiarities of our society and global trends, modern trends, and unfortunately, it's something that we don't have any control of. And I was pretty lucky in this respect. I started my freelance translation career and became pretty successful in it. I specialized in a big variety of topics from marketing and beauty to psychology, medicine, and even politics. I worked with various brands and companies, again, from small ones, from some individual authors and local companies to big international corporations. I enjoyed doing that job a lot as I worked from home. I didn't have to interact with people in person, which is awesome for introverts. And I could plan my working time just as I wanted. So why did I quit? Well, due to two reasons. First is geopolitical situation. When the war began, I lost most of my clients. And then with the rise of AI, my translation offers were slowly but steadily replaced with uh, editing jobs for machine translation, which I don't like. <laughs> I don't like editing. So yeah, this is the reality of life. Just to make it clear, copywriter is a person who writes text for marketing and commercial purposes. It's, uh, it can be product descriptions, ads, or social media posts. And I worked for a frightening variety of clients. Among them were a soap making company, a Siberian catering service, an Austrian skincare brand, I even had one client from an esoteric field and I honestly didn't last long with him because it was a very unsettling experience. At one point, I collaborated with an independent designer and offered naming services for her clients. Coming up with names for a business, different types of businesses, is a very interesting and exciting job, and I enjoyed it a lot, but with, as with many creative jobs, it was pretty depleting. For example, I had a client who wanted me to create a name for their business, but to do it in a very specific way, taking into account a special numerological scheme so that their business was destined to flourish and be successful. I had to create a name with a specific number of syllables and with specific letters in that name. Yeah, that was quite a task. And honestly, I don't miss that, that naming job at all. Becoming a ghostwriter was kind of organic continuation of my copywriting 
career. At some point, I started getting offers from different people who needed texts, but didn't have time or words for those texts. They found me based on word of mouth. I never advertised my services anywhere. I never had a website. So I just dealt with whoever addressed me. I wrote articles, speeches, and interviews for those people so that they could use those texts as their own. And I had, again, a wide variety of people who I worked with. Some of them were the following an Estonian embroidery artist, a food blogger from California, a photographer from somewhere in the US, a Moscow business coach, an artist from St. Petersburg, and many more that I don't even remember now. On the one hand, I liked that job, but on the other, I didn't, because just like every human, I wanted some acknowledgement, and I can never claim that I wrote all those texts that those people used. But doing that job, I learned a lot about people, about their lives, about their businesses, about what it feels like to be in their shadow. Yeah, it was very interesting, but depleting at the same time. This was one of the most bizarre jobs that I've ever had. Of course, in this video, I'm not disclosing any names, any company names or personal names, but this company is still one of the biggest global leaders in its field. They were hiring people from all over the world to perform quite a huge variety of analytical tasks online. I lasted for about a year on a contract with them, but then one month I failed an obligatory monthly test and I was expelled from the project. And I was secretly glad I failed, because that job sucked. Sometimes I had to deal with uh, materials and information that was so far away from my own personal interests and from my moral values that it felt disgusting. So it was very interesting and informative experience because I learned a lot about big corporations and their ethics and about myself too. So it was one of those jobs that helps crystallize your own moral stance. And in this respect, I'm glad that I had this experience. This was a very random and fun job that my cousin and I did together for one of my cousin's friends who ran a jewelry selling business. Our task was to model, to photograph, and to produce nice photos for the online shop. I think we made about three photo sessions, like for three collections, and it was a very exciting experience. I never wanted to become a model, but I'm interested in photography and in also, also in creating visually interesting images and moods. I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone, which eventually led me to opening my own tiny jewelry business. This endeavor lasted for about two years and ended when I had to leave my home city and my country in 2022. I had to leave all my jewelry supplies behind and I regret it, honestly, but hopefully sometime I will be able to reunite with those. But anyway, I created my own brand, I created my own designs with uh, natural gemstones, with stainless, ste stainless steel and silver, and I even had an 
Etsy shop. I had one sale through there because before my shop got closed, but mostly I sold again to people who happened to know me or who occasionally found me on Instagram and other social media platforms. This was just a lovely small side hustle through which I learned quite a lot of new skills crafting ones and also marketing ones, how to create and run your own small business. And that business was not the only one that I had. For about a year, I created and sold handmade pencil cases and drawstring bags with my original artwork on them. I created my own patterns uh, using unbleached cotton canvas and I created my own drawings and so I figured out all that design production thing. Again, I used word of mouth and social media to sell my pencil cases and drawstring bags. And now I uh, still have one of my pencil cases that I created and I use it for my art and craft supplies and also a couple of drawstring bags that I use like here and there. It was a slow side business that didn't bring a lot of income, but it was something that made me feel happy, inspired and fulfilled. My latest career scene that was born out of mere experiment and then turned out to be the most meaningful job that I've ever done. I enjoy making videos here on YouTube and on Patreon and have discovered a wonderful multifaceted community of like-minded people. It's you, dear friends. I got very lucky to be promoted by YouTube only within the first six months since I started my channel and I'm so glad that it happened because the channel has become a very important support in the most, the most difficult time of my life when I lost both of my parents and I had to immigrate from my home country. I still, I, I cannot even imagine what it would be like if I didn't have the channel, if I didn't have the whole supportive community. Although creating content is kind of my job now, but it's also a huge passion of mine and I'm using all the skills that I've acquired during my previous jobs. I use English, which is not my mother tongue, but which I mastered through my translation jobs. I dress my ideas into words thanks to my writing experience. I speak to my audience using everything that I've learned through working with different people. I try to make my videos visually meaningful and interesting thanks to my creative experiences. And so on and so forth. And of course, I would love to continue having this job, having a content creation job for as long as I can and for as long as I have audience. And also, I would love to revive my handmaking business just in some form because I just love doing that. And maybe I would love to use my teaching skills again, but not with language, but maybe teaching something creative that would be just amazing. But for now, I have no idea where my professional path would lead me to and I'm very excited to explore many other opportunities. Feel free to share your thoughts and your own professional experiences in the comments and also let me know if you enjoyed this type of podcast-ish long format. I would be interested to know. Thank you so much for your time and attention, dear friends, and big thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon and other tipping platforms, because thanks to you, this channel exists. And for now, as always, be safe and keep your heart open, and I will see you soon. Пока-пока!